Hey, hello, good morning, guys, and this is Coding with Kota. And guys, today I'm gonna tell you the most hardest level in Cloud Rip Mountains. Drum roll, please. Summit's Gates. So now that it took me a month to solve this. I uh, just like found solutions. I like tried, 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 used different stuff. And finally, in the last week, I got closer to it. And then, like, in the fifth, in the sixth day of the, in the, in the fifth day of the last week, I, I got it. But if in the submit, it just, it just demolished. And next, then on the seventh day, I, I spent like two hours cracking up a whole new solution. And then I got it. So, if you guys try this, I understand that is so hard. But, let's get started. So, the equipment is very, very, very important over here. So, I'm not going to be too picky about the equipment, but you should need this. The Sword of the Four, the Sword of the Forges, I would recommend you buying that. That would be a decent 2000. And nice glasses. And you have you might have the boss star three already. I am using my enable dragon plate and the deflector for the best health I can get. Guys, get the best armor you can have get. If you can't get your hands on any of these, wait. If you can't get your hands on any of these, just get the deflector. It's like 751 more than the helmet if you can't get your heads on the helmet. So, after we have all of our equipment checks, so, yeah, that is all you need. You need very good armor, the Sword of the Forges. I am not sure about Chain Lightning, but you should need the Invisibility Ring. Uh, the name is The Precious, but I call it the Invisibility Ring because it can cast Invisibility. Then uh, the fire opal stone, I don't think you need this. A normal stone would be okay. The shark tooth would be okay. Glasses, not this much range, but the best glasses I could recommend you right now are these. The crude telephoto glasses. Those are the best glasses I could recommend you guys. But if you have enough money, get your hands on the twilight glasses. And I just unequipped my watch by accident. Where is my belt? Yep, yeah, my belt. So after that, I don't know why I keep going and uh, equipping stuff. And yes, this is all you need. Just if you guys have enough money to copy my set, you don't need these glass. You don't need the flags. I just kept them just in case. But you know, we're not using flags. But after we did our equipment check. Let's get into the level. So this one has a tons of code in it. But let's understand it. Welcome to the summit state. So now this is all my code. There might be just some funny names in this, but you can guys just can keep up with me. So, this is how the gameplay goes. First, you go into invisibility, pass the big wave of the blue munchkins, and next then all you gotta deal with is the fang riders, the throwers, the ogres, and one of the scouts. And after you have that, you go straight for the catapults, and you just go straight for the catapults, you kill this one and that one. And then, after you do that, you go and attack the main door. You go for the beam tower, beam tower 1. Then, you kill it, you kill all the munchkins, go to the throwers, kill the second beam tower. And then, you go in. And next then, you go straight down right. And next then, you go to the place where I just summon tons of soldiers with all the gold I have. And then I ask my two paladins here to heal me until my full health. 
the next one you can see that my health is increasing and after that I go but instead of heading for the bone guys I go to the warlocks because those are the guys producing him after I wipe out the warlocks I use my other troops to help me get rid of the bones the two bone guys get rid of them and next then I get rid of the bone guys giving me time to get another heal in my hands and then I keep attacking so I just had these paladins right beside me to heal me just in case I lose power near the witch and besides that you just go attack and attack kill the chieftain boom success so the whole thing has occurred in three minutes 17 seconds so let's look at the code so basically you have to have a while true loop for anything so a while loop you take the paladins variable so you can store all your paladins in it and I'll just sit on more bit decently over here so then you take enemies you find the enemies then you cast invisibility if you can that what do that is what what dodges you from all these guys at the starting you don't need to face all the munchkins over here you just get past them and they just go for the bait so then after invisibility you find the friends four friend in the friend so you're like four loop each friend if a friend is a paladin you keep you throw him in the array and we're gonna use that array in the last that array is so needed so don't think that I'm like okay let that array do whatever you want each line of code is important next then you loop in the enemies if it's a catapult you just first go to the catapult instead of anything else and also why did I aim for the catapult first if these ogre guys are taking up my health the catapult actually helps me here and you look see the two catapults I'm too fast for them it goes behind me it wipes up the throwers the fang rider and finally the ogres and then I have to wipe out the small scout by myself and then other than that those guys are helping me so after that you attack them and extend you just command the friends to attack them I don't know why they do anything but it's just best that they don't do anything but I send one of these archers in front over here just to get the bait of the munchkins into our team. So that's why this command is important. And then after that, I told you that there would be some weird names. So let's just think that fire is the hero of fire nearest enemy. If there's a fire, while the enemy's dot health is greater than zero, you attack the fire. And when this code comes in, we will be already finished with the catapults and we'll be over here. And first, we don't want to waste our time with the throwers and the scouts when the two beam towers just shoot beams at us and we'll waste our lives. So first, we get rid of those two towers. And then if, it's, if it feels like that, then you just pass. And XM just moves there, kills, kills, and done. So then after that, if your heart pose is greater than 160, then you would be in front of the door. And uh, let's just look at that. You just go and kill these guys. And now, then if it's greater, look, see. It's just saying that you move here, you go here, and next then you move here, you move here. So next then after you do that, while the hero not health is less than the max health, he keeps moving over here. And next then he summons tons of soldiers, paladins, and next then now we are using the paladins array. But I thought that we should use a paladins array, but it includes the paladins from the first part which already died. So that likes brings up a mix up. So, to avoid that, I rename Paladins to Hero.Find by Type Paladin. And next then, you loop in the Paladins. If a Paladin, you ask them to heal. And next then, they heal you. 
Then after they heal you, it just still goes for less health. Wait, sorry. If hero on max health is less than or equal to the hero dot health, so if it's equal, like you're in the range of the hero dot health, you check for the fire again, and then you move to to two seven seven. 34, which is the up guy, right over here. There will be a warlock over there. You go up, kill him first, then you go down to the guy at 2775. Oh, wait. We already killed that guy. Wait. So, first you for the guy at down, then we go to the guy at the top, and then I just go back and I use this paladin to buy me some time. I kill the two bony heads, then I kill the scouts, go to the throwers, and use a bit of my paladin's help to defeat the witch. Then I go to the chieftain, my paladin's still behind me, helping me. And then, let's just go down and look at the code that had did this. So DJ is here at finished enemy. That's if DJ, while DJ, 27748. It's asking us to like crack the door open and extend lie if there's a lie. So why do I keep refreshing the hero dot find nearest enemy variables? So you have to refresh them because each time there'll be a different enemy. They might stick to one enemy after we move on. That will create a bit of a mix up. So I just refresh it just to find like the new nearest enemy. And then after that, he attacks the lie, then he asks the paladins to constantly heal him, and then he goes back to the fire variable, he attacks all the fires in the group. So, I'm just going to scroll up and scroll down slowly if you want to like get the copy of the solutions. So just here are the solutions. You can pause the video. So yep, here are the solutions for summit gates. And you would be like, wow, how does this look in the summit? Let's get into it. I just like looking at it. Oh, sh we're missing the whole action part. Yeah. So then he goes. He uses the catapults right over here to kill this guy. And then... I thought of getting rid of this guy, but he's too fast and my same speed to kill that guy. And then after that, I go kill this guy. I go for the beam towers. That's the main part of this. And after you kill the beam tower guy, you ask your paladin here for a bit of a thrower distraction. And then after you ask your paladin for a thrower distraction, you go up to the throwers. And then you go up to um, the other beep tower. But you guys might be thinking, why only the Sword of Forges? I only tried the full because it has a nice speed and 100 damage. That's very good. So that's why I like the Sword of Forges. That used to be my original sword until I switched to Rune Sword, seeing that's like one of the good ones. And then... You might be thinking also, why did I ask for a heal over there? If you closely look at our hero, look at the line. His health bar is like so small, he'll only have like 500, 600 based on his 3000 health. And then the two paladins hear him, so I heal him, saving time. And then just to keep him in occupied and produce a bit more troops, you produce soldiers. So we cannot skip the summit. We'll have to wait.
Okay, so the health is done. We're back in the game. So now he goes down for the first warlock guy. The next thing you kill him, giving you a big mega blast. Which pushes you back. You ignore the bony guys for now. The next thing you go for that guy. That guy dies. And now you go for the bony guys. Your paladins here just come near you to heal you. But thank god instead of going for the paladin, that guy goes for the soldier. And I just want to finish him off now. And then now, these guys are dead. I keep going. And then, I kept my paladins over there because I used to die at the witch. And now, this guy is over here healing me. So now, I could just easily go for the chieftain now. The chieftain's dead. We win. And here you go. The solutions for Summit's game. So, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to this video. And keep your questions in the comments if it's about coding and I'll try to answer them. So, yes. This is Coding with Gotham. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.